Hello everybody and welcome to your next uh, SFML tutorial. This is your long awaited video coming to you right now. Um, so in this video we're going to be learning about actually um, doing sprite animations. And um, before, if you've watched my Allegro tutorials and such, um, you'll see that I split it up into three parts. Uh, I don't think I need to do that right now because um, I haven't taught you guys all the essentials, the stuff that I've taught you before Allegro that you'll need to do perfect sprite animation and that stuff will come later. Um, so right now I might split up into one or two videos or I might just do it in one large video depending on um, how long it's how long I go for. Um, so right now uh, let us look at the top of our program uh, so we have our graphics.hpp uh, we have two defines called screen width and screen height and we set them in our video mode right here um, and we have uh, four more defines right here and um, the sprite um, for the the sprite sheet I'm using is the dimensions are 128 by 192 and um, there's four sprites across and four sprites down. So uh, the S down, S left, S right, and S up, right there. Um, those are gonna those are defining the starting positions from where you should start drawing. So S down. Um, since the row of down walk animations, it starts walking from here. So this is source down. So search drawing from here to pixel 48 on the y axis. Then S left, it starts drawing from pixel 48 all the way down to pixel 96. For S right, it goes from pixel 96 all the way to pixel 144. And S up goes from pixel 144 all the way to down to 192. And that's how it's going to work. So on on each frame each frame of the image is 32 by 48. So uh, let us look into our code. So we already know how to create render windows. We already know how to um, create images. So what we do, I I'll give you a website um, on where you can create your own sprites and stuff. But yeah, so uh, there's, I, I don't know if I did in my other tutorial when I tell you about images, I don't know, but if I have it, then I'll put it in this video. So we created an image called temp image and a sprite called player sprite. I know it's not spelled properly, but that's how I spelled it throughout my whole program by accident, so I'm going to keep it that way. So um, if we've loaded it cr um, correctly, then player sprite dot set image to temp Im image. Now we have a lot of variables here. We have velocity x, velocity y. Uh, float x, uh, float y, um, for x and y position for our player, the move speed, the speed at, at which the player moves at, the source x and the source y, and that's basically going to specify where we should start drawing from on our actual image, and then it will crop out that certain section of the image so we can draw it. Now notice my image is a PNG file, so the background is transparent except for the actual part we're drawing. Um, so yeah, and I think there's a way to set. If you have a different color for the background, I believe you can set a color for the background. I think it's something called temp image dot uh, create mask from color, and then you'll put an SF color in there and then yeah you could set a color that will be viewed as transparent normally it's magenta which is 255 red 0 green and 255 blue so we have our regular um, game loop right here if windows open we create our event, our event loop right here and then now we're doing our update um, we're getting our updates so if the person presses the right arrow key uh, then source y is equal to s right um, so basically, uh, our source Y is just basically going to be selecting which area on the Y coordinate we're going to start drawing from, as I showed you before. So source Y is equal to right, S right, which is equal to 
96. So notice how to start to draw to start drawing for the 96 pixel on the y coordinate. Same for s left, s up, s down, and we set our velocity on y to equal to move speed, negative move speed, negative move speed, and move speed. So right here we say um remember you have to have that else there because if you're not pressing any of those buttons then you need to set it to zero by default. Same for velocity x. So when we go down here we say x plus equals velocity x, y plus equals velocity y. That's just good programming practice to do it this method. I don't know why but well, it's, well I do know why. It's basically um if you want to incorporate gravity and stuff then this stuff will become more relevant. Right now it's irrelevant to you guys, but once you get gravity then it will become relevant. Simple enough. So I'm saying if velocity y x is not equal to zero or velocity y is not equal to zero, that means we should animate the image. That's that means that if the if the player is moving in any direction, then we should cycle through the images. And we do this through source x. So we say source x plus equals tem image dot get width divided by four. So what is this saying right now? So um, the source x by default is zero. Okay. So say the source x is equal to zero and source y is equal to s down. So source y is equal to zero. Okay. So if we look at our image right here, um, the, it starts drawing from this top corner, source x and source y. So from zero zero. Right, so it says, um, so we have to be able to cycle through each one of these images from this to this to this to this, and once it reaches this image, it resets back to the first image, the original image. So, how do we do this? We do this by we say, um, I said temp image dot get width divided by four. There's four pictures, so the the whole the width. Of this image is 128, and 128 divided by 4 is 32. So what it's going to do is that source y is equal to zero, and source x is equal to zero. So the next update frame, it does source x plus equals 32. So it moves 32 pixels to the right, then it starts drawing from here, and it will crop out this picture. Then it will move 32 spaces to the right again. It will crop out this picture move 32 spaces to the right again then start drawing from there and crop out this picture once it realizes that it's at the end of the picture then it will reset back again over here and I'll show you how it does that so um, we say that first of all that if the player is not moving then we reset the source x to equal to zero meaning that it will show a standing image so if I was to open this again so uh, if we reset source x to zero, it doesn't matter where source y is, all of them are standing images. So we say that if source x is equal to temp image dot get width, so if the source x is equal to the width of the um the image, then we want to reset source x equal to zero. So if source x is equal is pointing at this pixel right here, it it, it is not going to draw anything because there's nothing over here. So it means reset source x equal to zero so that it starts drawing this picture right here. Okay. So uh, now that we got that down, then we have to clear the window. So we clear the window. Now this is something new to you, the set sub rect and set position. I'm not sure if that's familiar to you. I never really been to SFML tutorial in so long, so I'm not sure if I taught that to you. But I will explain it anyways. So you put player sprite dot set sub rect, and what this does is that it um, creates a selection or crops out a section of an image. So what we're gonna do is that we set sub rect and we do sf underscore int rect, meaning that we're taking it's just specifying the dimensions that we're taking out. So it wants to know the starting pixels to start taking cropping and the end pixels to start cropping from. So the first two is the x1 and a y1 and the last two are the x2 and the y2. So we're going to start cropping from the source x and from the source y. Right? Um, so if source x is equal to zero, source y is equal to zero, that means we're going to start cropping from over here. So now to draw this whole image we want to start we want to stop cropping right here for the x coordinate 
and stop cropping from over here in the y coordinate. So how do we do that? We say source x plus equals tem image dot get width divided by four. So what is this saying? That x two is equal to source x plus thirty two, and then that will give us the end position to start drawing. And what this is basically saying is source y plus forty eight because the the width of the image, the height of the image is one ninety two. One ninety two divided by four is equal to forty eight. So it's basically saying source x plus forty uh, plus forty eight. So it's gonna do this. It's gonna be like x one and y one is up here, and x x two and y two is down uh, down here. So uh, it's gonna say so then since uh, we have to join those two points together and then we will crop from those two points. So if I go into paint.net just to show you uh, a better example. So um say this is our our sprite sheet so sorry this is from a different tutorial so say this is our sprite sheet uh why isn't it drawing okay so this is our sprite sheet right here so um what what we want to check for we're checking for the x the x1 and y ones right here and the x2 and y2 is say over here so what it will do is it will start cropping from here from x1 x1 y1 to x2 y2 from here crop that selection and then draw that selection to the screen then when source x when we add source x then it will go to this selection and draw it do this draw 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 then reset itself and then do it all over again, do the same process all over again. So that's what sub set subrect does. And set position is straightforward. Um, we just set the position to the x and y position of the player by doing x and y. We do window dot draw to draw our sprite to the screen, and window dot display to display everything. And but if you were to run your program, this is what you should get. Um. So you'll get an image that's standing up like this, and your image will, your player will be able to walk. Now notice the legs are moving a, a, like at, a, at an extremely fast rate, and this is because we don't have um, a clock or a timer to regulate the frames per second. So basically, um, the player's moving the legs or the animations or the frames or whatever you like to call it are moving at the speed of the hardware or the speed of the computer you're running at therefore that your program will run on different speeds on different computers if I was using one of the computers that was made like in the 1990s then the walking pace might be slowed down a bit but if you do it on a newer computer with a su uh, super hardware then the leg speed or the frame speed will move completely too fast and you don't want that you don't want it on different grades of computers it runs at different speeds and that's why I'm going to teach you about clocks and stuff after I'm done teaching you about, about sprite animation and teach you how to do a fluid animation so thanks for watching this tutorial hope you enjoyed it and bye